Streaming bandwidth provided by Worship Channels. Live streaming made simple. Visit them online at worshipchannels.com. On today's Tech Help for Churches, audio versus video podcasts. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Tech Help for Churches. I'm your host, Paul Allen Clifford. Thanks for joining me here on this show. Join the live conversation just by giving me a call, one 763 3246 or 1-877-POD-ECHO. If you're more of an email person, paul at trinitydigitalmedia.com will get you in touch with me, as will going over to Twitter and tweeting me at Paul Allen Cliff, that's P-A-U-L-A-L-A-N-C-L-I-F. Real quick, I would love if you could do just a couple of favors for me. Uh, no money involved, just a couple of minutes. Either go to bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y slash survey C-T-C to fill out the audience survey, or head over to iTunes, and if you could just uh, do a search for this podcast and give us just a couple of words about how you like it and how it's helpful, that would be great. I'm trying to get the reviews in iTunes up. If you really want to go all out, leave nothing on the table, just go for it like crazy, you can, in fact, do both. Just saying, don't want to get uh, you going too wild and crazy, but you can do both. By the way, if you haven't signed up for my newsletter, I give away a free copy of my first book, a free electronic copy of my first book, Podcasting Church is part of that. So you can go to bit.ly slash podcast church free. And that's all lowercase, all one word, no spaces, no hyphens, no nothing bit.ly slash podcast church free spelled exactly like it sounds so speaking of podcasting since i've just said that i literally wrote the book on podcasting since you can get it by going and signing up for yeah whatever anyway um you might be curious if you're thinking about doing a podcast for your church whether you should do an audio or video podcast and my answer is yes now, some of you just went, what? but I said, or. Yeah, um, what I mean by that is that an audio podcast and a video podcast, they serve different audiences. So let's get started on just that piece of the puzzle, shall we? Now, you would think that video would be the way to go if you're thinking, Well, I want the best I can. I want to reach out to the most people I can. That's clearly video. We live in a television culture. People watch TV. That's what I'm going to do is video. That's true. But right now, it's while it's much less difficult now than it has ever been before to get a video podcast on your television, including using things like uh, TiVo, Roku, Apple TV, and now the new Chromecast. Those all make it much easier to watch it on TV. It's still non-trivial. Now, uh, the, the geeks, we can all do it, no problem, with one hand tied behind our backs. It's pretty easy. But for the non-technical people among us, uh, it's not non-trivial. So most of the time they end up watching on their iPads, iPhones, Android devices, Windows phones, I suppose, can do it. Uh, any of those things. Left out BlackBerry. BlackBerry as well as a player. So most of the time you can watch them there. But that's not really a group watching experience. 
additionally, when in your life are you sitting around, not in front of a television, but with, but with your uh, tablet or with your phone, etc., just watching videos? When are you doing that? Not very often. So, I mean, there are occasions, but when you're in the car, when you're exercising, when you're doing chores at home, a lot of times you need your eyes. So that's something that I've found personally, even though I'm a video guy, I love video, I love making video, that's part of why I do what I do. In fact, you can watch this in video on YouTube, or you can which, by the way, is not a podcast. If someone says that it is, they're wrong, because words have meanings, and that's not the meaning of it. You can watch this on YouTube, or you can listen to it, having subscribed through iTunes, um, and a few other ways to do it, including just the regular RSS feed. Listening, first off, opens up a large audience that could not take your content in any other way. I used to listen to uh, a church tech podcast that's uh, pod faded. That's what we call when a podcast just kind of goes away. So they pod faded and they started as an audio podcast and then they went pure video, no audio, just video. I mean, there was the audio on the video, but there wasn't any video, any audio feed that was separate from the video. And then they decided they were going to go back to just audio, and that's when they faded away to nothing. So, I quit listening to them when they went to all video. And the reason for that is I listen in my car. Now, as I run, I listen to podcasts. And neither of those are conducive to watching. Now, sure, I could have spent the extra time and convert it from uh, an MP4, an MOV file, over to an MP3 file. I could have done it. I have the technology. Um, unfortunately, it's a lot of work. Well, not really a lot of work, but it's a lot of work when you're right on the edge of liking something anyway, and that's an excuse not to use it. So, this particular podcast, um, I kind of liked it. I liked all the people on it, for sure. I just, I didn't get all the value. I didn't see where I was getting value out of it. So while I found it entertaining and the interactions were great, I always felt like, well, wow, I've just spent a half an hour listening to these people talk, and I'm not sure I've learned anything technical. And I think I had, I just didn't feel like it. So I didn't spend the extra time to convert it from video to audio. But if they'd done that, I would have continued to stay subscribed, and I would have continued to listen, and engage and everything. So that's why when you asked, well, metaphorically when you asked, should you do audio or video, and I said yes, what I meant was there's a certain audience that will love video, and then there's a other audience that will love audio. Now you can do something that... Uh, my friend Daniel J. Lewis over at the Audacity to Podcast podcast is doing, and that is he's creating two separate feeds. The, one is audio and one is video, and the video feed has different content from the audio. Now, this makes perfect sense when you think about it. So, if you do that, the people that want to see the uh, video they can watch the video. The people that want to hear the audio, they can listen to the audio. But, since they're different with different content, some things are just better with video. 
right now we're going through this thing at my church where we're trying to put down all the processes of everything that we do so that if something happens to someone, that's someone's weekly job uh, won't go unfilled, you'll have the ability to basically give someone notes on how to do it. Well, when it comes to technology, there's a lot of knobs and levers and buttons and places to click and different computers. And we've been instructed to do all this in text and it's kind of hard to do in text. So there are some things that are better done in video. It's easier to say press this button here than to go, okay, on the front of the camera, if you go back about an inch, but towards the bottom, there's a little switch. To the right of the switch, there's a button. Underneath that button, there's a, a toggle switch and underneath that toggle switch is actually the button I want you to press. You see how that was so many more words when press this button really was all you needed to do if they could see you pressing that button. So there are some times when video is absolutely essential. So if you're doing training for a tech podcast for example, if you're training your people on how to run the technology in your church, video might be the preferred method of doing it. But it could be that you want to do a little bit of video and a little bit of audio. Now, when it comes to the sermon, I recognize that most churches, when they podcast, they, they just reuse the sermon, which there's nothing wrong with it, but recognize that most churches, when they podcast, they reuse the sermon. Did you notice that? You are no different from the thousands of other churches that podcast and podcast their sermons. So in that case, you're trying to build audience solely based on your pastor's preaching ability, which may be excellent. But keep in mind, I can listen to Bill Hybels. I can listen to Stephen Furtick. I can listen to Rick Warren. I can listen to some of the greatest preachers of our time. If it was 20 years ago, but the technology of today was back then, I could listen to Billy Graham. Do you see what I'm saying? Uh, Louise Palau is still active. I could listen to Louise Palau. I'm not saying that your pastor or you isn't as good as them, because you might be. But I'm saying... If you're only competing on sermon versus sermon, you're dealing with, you know, it could be the case that you've been preaching for 15 years. Well, what about the, you're competing with someone who's been preaching for 40 years and has that much more experience in the pulpit. So that's why in previous episodes, I've encouraged you to branch out and do different things. Well, when it comes to your sermon, the audio might be sufficient. It would save you resources and so on. But it could be that people really like the video. So pay attention. Chances are you're not going to get people that say, man, I... I just have to do both. I have to listen to it and watch it. Now, some will, but you won't get a lot of people that want both the same people. They're different audiences. Now, if you've got a podcast that's all about stage design, then it's the case that um, the stage design is something that's visual. If you've got a podcast all about lighting design, lighting design is visual. So in those cases, maybe a video podcast wouldn't translate very well to audio. So that would be a situation where perhaps video only is what you should do. So keep those things in mind 
and decide which is better for you in your situation because sometimes it's audio and sometimes it's video and you need to decide whether it's audio video or both and do that to the best of your ability now keep in mind that when it comes to video you have another set of complications so if your plan was just to use the webcam on your computer and do it that way and you have no idea of what to do for lighting you have no idea of what to do for sound versus having the sound person at your church record audio and let them deal with it you might have an issue where you've got really bad quality so if you're looking at my webcam here I've framed it with my hands which look a little Hulk hands ish Ooh, Hulk mad um, Hulk smash Brr. sorry I just had a little moment so if you're looking at my webcam I am actually not using the built-in webcam on my laptop part of the reason for that is the built-in webcam on my laptop is at a fixed height now I can put things on top of it or uh, I can put it my laptop on top of things to raise it but I have so often seen video where it's clear that the person's laptop is on their lap and it's looking up at them like like it's a little kid gazing in wonder at the awe of their brilliance now I'm sure that's not what they meant it just looked odd remember that from a viewers perspective they can't tell how tall you are or anything they can they don't have the physical clues of living in the body of the webcam so they're a little stuck when it comes to that what you can do to balance that out is make sure you get a more straight-on shot don't shoot from above that will diminish the subject don't shoot too far from below that makes them look powerful and a little scary actually shoot somewhere in the middle so that's one thing that you've got to keep in mind as you're doing video another thing is lighting so here at uh, my studio while I am using a webcam and I'm not happy about using the webcam and I'm investigating alternatives I've got a better camera I just have to get it into the computer and I even know how to it's just money um, right here here I'm adjusting it so you can see the lighting change on my face I have a softbox off to my right your left for a fill light I have a reflector in front of me I have lighting above me that kind of is my hair light or backlight so I have special lighting for my situation if you're planning on having a weekly pastor's thoughts I I really strongly advise that you do something like this I will tell you that the entire lighting setup that I am using right now cost me less than fifty dollars so there's a very good chance that the lamp on your desk cost you more than what I'm using right now I'm using a clamp reflector light with a couple of uh, compact fluorescents above me for my backlight in my softbox I'm using again a couple of uh, hundred watt equivalent uh, tungsten balanced compact fluorescence now I had to do a little work to make both of those work because out of the box I didn't the reflector is actually a reflector from like you would use in a car window you know that that silvery material I picked it up at Walmart a few years ago and uh, I'm using it today so less than fifty dollars for my lighting setup and you see that there's a stronger light on one side of my face than the other kind of like maybe what it would be like if the Sun was hitting the side of my face yeah that's what we're trying to do so that's something else that you have to keep in mind when you're doing video is it's harder than doing just video 
So I hope I've given you lots of stuff to think about. I hope that you're thinking about whether you're doing it right or whether you need to spend some time and work on what you're doing. And above all, what I want you to do more than anything else is I just want you to go out and change eternity. Until next time, I'm Paul Allen Clifford with TrinityDigitalMedia.com.